Today I'm counting down the top 10 worst foods and habits for our health. I want you to leave me a comment and let me know what you think the worst, most unhealthy food or habit is uh, so you can see if you guess correctly. The first mistake is not getting enough high quality fats in our diet. And I know that that's actually backwards from what we have been told. There was this huge craze of non-fat foods, fat-free products, telling us that we needed to avoid fats. But the truth is, our body needs fats. They are essential to our mental health. Literally, these healthy fats compose our brain cells. They're also essential to helping us feel full and satisfied and satisfying our hunger. So if you're somebody that craves really fattening foods like fried foods or potato chips, this is probably an indication that your body is needing fats. And the trick is you just need to be eating the right fats and not the wrong fats. So of course we want to avoid fried foods. We also want to avoid trans fats. And oftentimes you won't see the word trans fats on the label. You're gonna have to turn it over and read the ingredients and look for words like hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils. These are trans fats and they are really horrific for your health. And what we do wanna do is increase our intake of good healthy fats. So this is nuts, avocados, fish, good high quality oils like coconut oil or olive oil. And the more that we just incorporate these into our diet, or even take an omega-3 supplement if that's easier for you, you're gonna find increased mental clarity, you're gonna find that you actually become full and satisfied when you eat rather than still feeling hungry after you eat, and you're also gonna find that you have less cravings for really fattening foods. The second worst habit is drinking out of plastic containers and especially microwaving plastic containers. So bisphenol A or BPA got a lot of attention because it is a really horrific chemical that's known to be an endocrine disruptor. It also has been linked to obesity, it's been linked to hormone imbalances, and even to fetal development issues. So at this point, the FDA has actually banned BPA from use in baby bottles, but there are still a lot of groups who would like to see it banned completely from all food storing containers because it's found in baby bottles, it's found in plastic water bottles, it's found in a lot of different kinds of plastic. And even if it's a plastic that doesn't necessarily contain BPA, you wanna recognize that pretty much all plastics have the potential to leach into the food, especially when they're heated. And none of these plastic chemicals are good and healthy for our bodies. So the best solution is going to be avoiding drinking or eating from plastic containers as much as possible, and especially avoiding microwaving things in plastic containers. So glass, drinking out of glass is a great alternative. There are also stainless steel water bottles available if you need something that's a little more durable. Just recognize that the plastics industry is really going out of its way to prevent this information about the dangers of plastics from getting out to us, making a big fuss about, oh, it's really not a health issue. But in 2010, Canada's Department of the Environment did officially state that BPA is a toxic substance. So just recognize that even though there's some controversy about the safety of plastics, you're gonna be a lot better off just avoiding them completely. The next mistake is lathering up with a chemical soup every time we shower. So this tip is about recognizing that your skin is a direct pathway into your bloodstream. So things we put on our skin actually do enter our body and can affect our health. So the Environmental Working Group estimated that the average woman uses 12 different skin or cosmetic products that have a total of 168 different chemical ingredients just contained in those 12 products, uh, while the average male uses only six products with a total of 85 different chemical ingredients. And you should know that there is no oversight over the safety of these cosmetic ingredient products. 
So all of these chemicals that we are putting on our skin and into our bloodstream, none of them have been tested for safety. Many of them are known carcinogens. So we want to actually turn over the labels of the products that we're using on our skin and apply the same rules that we do to food. And if it's a big long list of chemicals that we have no idea where they came from, uh, we want to avoid those products as much as possible. Coconut oil, sweet almond oil, shea butter, these are really great natural moisturizers for the skin. If you are somebody who uses a lot of acne creams or skin clearing potions, this also applies to you too. If it's got a huge list of crazy chemicals, I would avoid a product like that. You should recognize that even the American Academy of Dermatology has officially stated that a healthy diet is very important for good, clean skin and clear skin. So as we improve our overall health, just do simple things like drinking more water, eating more fruits and vegetables, taking the chemical junk out of our diet and out of our skin products. We should see our skin clear up anyways and actually not even need those crazy acne potions. Americans drink 400 million cups of coffee every single day. And while caffeinated beverages can be a good quick fix for energy issues, depending on them all throughout the day or every single morning for several years of your life can actually lead to a situation where you're gonna have such severe fatigue that even a cup of coffee won't help. So it's important to recognize that every time we artificially create energy in our body by drinking a caffeinated beverage or by actually doing a stimulant drug or anything like that, we're kind of creating an energy deficit. And it's really just a matter of time before our adrenals are so just fatigued and overworked that they're gonna just poop out completely. And then you end up with a really severe issue like chronic fatigue syndrome. So, I'm not saying that you can never ever drink a, a cup of coffee or a caffeinated beverage, but if you are somebody who drinks them really regularly or who has been drinking a cup of coffee every day for 10 or 20 years, just recognize that within your body, the health effects are negative and the effect on your adrenal glands is negative. And this isn't a good habit that we wanna be doing on a really regular basis. So this is not popular information. I know you guys don't wanna hear this, but this is a really important tip for protecting our health and our energy. The next worst habit is a sedentary lifestyle. The bottom line is that our bodies were made to move. And if we're spending a lot of our time sitting at a desk or driving in a car, and then we get home and we sit on the couch, a good way to think about it is how much of my time am I spending doing these different things? And if you're spending most of your time sitting around, then that can be a problem. So the point of fitness and exercise is not only to strengthen the muscles that we can see on the outside, but also to strengthen our heart and our other organs. So cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, all of these things are going to have increased likelihood if you are living a sedentary lifestyle and you aren't regularly getting your heart pumping and getting your heart working so you can actually strengthen your heart, which arguably is one of the most important muscles in your body. It's also important to do flexibility and stretching, something like yoga, because this not only improves our circulation of our blood, but it also improves circulation of our lymph, which is important for clear skin and reducing cellulite, which we were talking about in the last tip. And it's also going to help prevent pain. Probably most importantly is that if we are spending a lot of time sedentary, then we're likely going to be spending a lot of time with chronic pain. So whether it's something like arthritis or whether it's just nagging back pain all the time, these things are significantly prevented and relieved by doing something like regular stretching or yoga. So hopefully this tip encourages you to get out there, get moving. There are a million different ways to move your body and hopefully you will find one that you really do enjoy and can do on a regular basis. 
fast foods, junk foods, processed foods, and that includes the genetically modified foods. Unfortunately, the foods that are the most convenient, the most advertised, the most addictive, and least expensive are also really, really horrific for our health. And you don't need me to tell you that fast foods and junk foods aren't good for us. But what it's important to realize is that processed foods in general, so that's anything that comes in a package, anything with a really long ingredient list, especially when that ingredient list is a bunch of really long chemical names, anything that is a prepackaged meal or a microwave dinner, and also pretty much anything that we get from restaurants. These are processed foods, and that means that they are not natural foods. They have a whole host of different chemicals added to them. So that's preservatives, that's artificial flavors, artificial colors. It also includes chemicals that are added to foods specifically to purposefully make the foods more addictive. And that's one of the reasons that it can be so hard to stop eating these foods and to resist these foods. But as we can transition our diet to things that are more natural, so fruits and vegetables, beans, grains that have not been processed or have not been bleached, we will be able to regain our health. We're going to not only have more energy and probably more mental clarity, but it's going to help protect us from obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, all of these different diseases which are now being linked to a diet of processed foods. So, drugs are bad, okay? We know that we shouldn't be doing illicit, illegal drugs. We know that addictions to alcohol, or really any addiction, is not a healthful habit to have in our lives. But what maybe a lot of people don't realize is that depending on over-the-counter medications or even prescribed medications to keep us healthy uh, is really kind of bass backwards. So the ideal scene is that our body is in such good health that we don't need to take a prescribed medication in order to quote unquote keep us healthy. And if you are taking a prescribed medication like a statin drug for instance, then this doesn't really mean that the medication is, is making you healthy. It's compensating for something that your body is not able to do on its own, but that it should be able to do. And we can think about the almost comedic list of side effects uh, that accompany any kind of prescribed medication. And that is just evidence of the fact that these drugs affect our bodies in a myriad of ways. So maybe we're taking the drug for this one problem, but we're actually gonna have side effects because the drug is affecting a lot of different organs in our body and it's affecting our overall health. So we want to avoid relying on prescription drugs. And if you're taking a lot of different prescription drugs together, then that would also be something that I would recommend you look for a functional doctor, a doctor of functional medicine, who can maybe help you address these issues and figure out how to get you out of a situation where you're relying on those medications uh, to keep you healthy, when really those medications are just there to keep you alive. Now, sadly, this applies to the over-the-counter medications too, because all of these med medications, whether they're over-the-counter or whether they're prescription drugs, they are going to be really hard on your liver. In many cases, they're really high on, hard on your digestive tract, and you will know that when you take them because they make you feel really sick to your stomach. Um, Tylenol is actually the number one cause of liver failure. It is actually even more so than alcohol because the effects of Tylenol and aspirin and all of these different drugs are really hard on your liver, which has to detoxify your body and try to get rid of toxic chemicals that we ingest. So even Tylenol and aspirin are things that I'm not gonna say you can never take them, but if you're taking these types of drugs on a really regular basis, like several times a week, you wanna recognize that these 
aren't like vitamins. These aren't giving nutrients to your body. These are medications, these are toxic chemicals that while they may help with your headache, for instance, are going to have an accumulative effect of toxicity in your body. So I would hope that this information is useful to you and that you're able to lay off some of the over-the-counter and prescribed medications that you're taking. Americans consume a lot of meat, like 25 billion pounds, and that's just beef. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you shouldn't eat meat. I think it's important that we really pay attention to the way our body feels when we eat different foods and then make our own choice accordingly. But what you do need to know is that when you do eat meat or any animal products, so that would include dairy products, eggs, and even fish, it's important to look for something that is grass-fed or wild-caught in the case of fish, organic if you can find it, and from a local farmer if that's available to you. Because when we're eating conventional animal products, these come from factory farms. So what does that mean? A factory farm means that these animals are kept in very close quarters with one another, Oftentimes with chickens, they actually have to cut the beaks of the chickens off because they would peck each other to death due to this high stress, highly confined environment that they're forced to be in. Some of these animals never even see the light of day one time over the course of their whole lives. So if you can just imagine, these animals are stressed out their whole lives. They're sick their whole lives because they're fed an unnatural diet of grains or corn, and they're actually given antibiotics just to keep them alive. All of these different chemicals that the animals are being given, all of the stress that the animals are under while they're alive, this equates to very negative health effects when we eat those animals. So if you're going to eat animal products, look for the words grass-fed, look for the words, um, if you're buying fish, you wanna look for the words wild-caught, and just recognize that the conventional meats that we get in the grocery store or at restaurants, of course, anything that's in junk food or fast food, this is coming from factory farmed animals and is really, really bad for our health. I love sugar just as much as you do, I promise. But we really need to wake up and realize that sugar is not good for us. And if you are eating the conventional American diet of these processed foods, then sugar is in just about everything, from white bread, to salad dressing, to, to spaghetti sauce, you name it. If you actually turn over the label and look at the sugar content, you will see how much sugar is actually found in these products. Now, high fructose corn syrup is another sweetener that I definitely want to warn everyone about. So we take everything from my video, Are Food Chemicals Killing You?, and combine it with the fact that high fructose corn syrup is even sweeter than sh sugar, so it can be even more addictive. We wanna avoid things that contain high fructose corn syrup, avoid things that contain huge amounts of sugar, and we definitely want to avoid the artificial sweeteners. So that's aspartame, any of those little colored packets that you find. Uh, there's the white packet that says sugar, and then there's a couple of other ones that are different colors, and those are your artificial sweeteners. So if we're looking for something sweet, our best bet is just eating a whole piece of fruit because the fiber in the fruit is going to kind of ease the effects of all the sugar that's contained in the fruit. You also want to just become aware of how much sugar is in the foods that you're buying because a lot of times we don't even realize how much sugar. It's estimated that each American eats somewhere between 143 and 200 pounds of sugar every year. And that's just way too much sugar. Sugar has been linked to cancers. It's been linked to all kinds of different immune system problems, uh, mental health type of issues. So if you're somebody who eats a lot of sugar or considers yourself a sugar addict, I would highly recommend that you work on 
removing those artificial sweeteners and huge amounts of sugar from your diet and look for some natural sweeteners like fruit, honey, even stevia is gonna be a better substitute for sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Not only is stress incredibly uncomfortable and unpleasant, but it's also really terrible for our health. When our body is surging with cortisol and we are really stressed out, it's going to stress our immune system, our digestive system, our reproductive system, and in general is just going to lend us to higher blood pressure and all kinds of other health related issues. So we live in a crazy society where we're always rushing around, there's always a million things to do. Um, and one of the things that really helped me is just accepting that there will always be more stuff to do than I have time for. And recognizing that that's okay. It's gonna be a lot more important for us to prioritize our health, taking some downtime, avoiding stress, avoiding staying really stressed out and just being stressed out all the time as much as we can. And at the end of our lives, really, it's going to mean a lot more health if we can avoid stress than if we had actually been stressed out our life but we got all of our errands done. So things like yoga, meditation, just having a fun hobby that you enjoy are really good ways to decrease the amount of stress in your life. Just breathing deeply is a really good way to decrease the amount of stress in our lives. Stress has been linked to infertility and a whole host of other issues. Just the amount of weakening your immune system and making you more likely to get sick may be one of the number one reasons to try and avoid being stressed out as much as we can. So in this video, I was counting down the top 10 worst foods and worst habits for our health. And in a future video, I'm gonna count down the top 10 best things that we can do for our health and give you some really good tips on how you can start integrating these healthier habits into your life. And in another video, I'm going to go deeper into detail about factory farming and why we want to avoid these factory farmed meat products as much as possible. Again, I'm not telling you not to eat meat, but you wanna be careful about the meat you do eat. Thank you for watching my video today. I hope that you found some valuable information here. Remember that at Psyche Truth, we are dedicated to helping you take control of your health and happiness. So please like this video if you liked it, share it with your friends on Facebook, be sure to subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel, and if you'd like to learn more about me and my health coaching practice, you can visit KarinaRachel.com. Thank you so much for watching. For a really simple guide on how to eat a healthy diet and even lose weight, check out my video, The Easiest Diet Ever. For another list of foods not to eat and healthy foods you can replace them with, check out my video, What Not to Eat. To learn more about the difference between real foods and junk foods, check out my interview with clinical nutritionist, Dr. Vince Belonzi, Real versus Fake Foods. Is it possible that food allergies are actually the cause of your health problems? Check out our video on food allergies.